All right, let's burn some paper here. This one's gonna take a little while, so sit back, but I think it's important. And maybe what you can do is while you're sitting back and watching, is maybe you can kind of maybe work ahead of me by a half of a step and see if we arrive at the same place. So we have a system. First thing we want to do is turn it into an augmented matrix. Looks a little cleaner. First step, well, the next step was is we wanted to have a one in that original place. So in order to do that, I may do something like, I'm gonna change row two with row one, one of our row operations. So now it becomes yeah. with that. So we have a one, check, that's what we wanted to do. But we want it also next to also have zeros underneath of that one. So I'm gonna to need to scale rows two and add to something. So let's look at in this particular one, let's um, multiply row one by negative three and add it to row two. Remember what that meant? Take row three, multiply it by a negative three and add to row two and replace row two. So negative three times a one, well, let's just write down row one to begin with. All right, there's row one. So multiply row one by negative three, so that makes it negative three, plus a three makes it a zero. Negative three times a one, uh, a one makes it a negative three, negative three plus a one makes it a negative two, negative three times two is negative six, negative six plus a two, gives me a negative four, negative three times a 19, uh, 60 minus three, 57. So a negative 57 plus a 31, 26, negative 26. All right, have a zero now in that spot. Let's go ahead and get a zero in that next spot as well. So let's take, um, Row one, let's multiply row one by a negative one and add it to row three this time. So negative one times row one, negative one times one is a one, negative one plus a one, zero. Negative one to that is negative one plus that makes that a two. Negative one times a two is a negative two plus a two makes it a zero. Negative one times 19 is a negative 19, negative 19 plus a 25 provides a six. All right, so we're on our way to row echelon form. Notice I have a one in the first diagonal spot, then zeros underneath of it. From here, we want to get a one in that center spot. So let's go ahead and just rewrite our first part of their matrix. So what do you think we should do then to get a one in the spot where the negative two is at. That's right, let's do a factor, let's do a negative one half times row two. So everywhere in row two, let's divide it by a negative half. So we still have a zero, two, or two times a one half, a negative, yeah, two times a negative one half produces a one. Negative four times a negative one half is a negative two and one half, no, one, negative one half times a negative four is a positive two. Negative one half times a negative 26 makes a positive 13. All right, so we're good with that. And then I need to have a zero in this spot underneath of that. So is there an operation I can do right now? Sure, we can scale row two. So let's multiply row one by a two a negative two, and then add it to row three. So negative two times row one, so negative two times a one is negative two, add it to row three. I can't do that, can I? So I need to do it to row two. So my new row two because I wanna make sure I have a zero there. So it's a zero. Mm 
I'm gonna hold it here. What's the best way to do that, folks? I think I was just skipping too many steps ahead is what I was doing. I got it kind of got fused. Uh, so let's just write down what we have. Let's crush that off for now. So zero, two, zero and a six. All right. So for this to work, I need this to become a zero right there. For that to become a zero, let's multiply row two. So let's multiply row two by a negative two and add it to row three. I guess that's what I was wanting to do, but it would just, I got a little cramped up there. So one, one, two, 19, zero, one, two, and 13. All right, that's a zero. Negative two times row one, which is a negative two, negative two plus a two is a zero. Negative two times a two is a negative four, negative four plus zero is a negative four. Negative two times 13 is 26. 26, it's a negative 26, plus six gives me a negative 20. All right. I want a negative one in that spot right there in that diagonal, so let's go ahead and multiply row three by a, by a negative one fourth. Negative one fourth times negative four is a one. Negative one fourth times a negative 20 is a five. And now I was able to convert this matrix into row echelon form. And then let's convert it back to and see what we have. We would have then X plus Y plus two Z equals 19. Y plus two Z equals 13, and then z equals 5. And then the solution from there is just a simple process of back substituting on in. If z equals 5, then y plus 2z, that would make, so we would have y equals, z equals 5, y would equal y plus 10, that would equal a 3. Plug those back into the first one, so x plus three, plus two Z, which is a five, equals a 19. Um, X plus 13 equals 19, and X equals six. So there's our solution to this original equation by just learning how to deal with matrices and use something we call Gaussian elimination to work to the process to get to this row echelon form, ones on the diagonal, which means that our third row is already solved for the variable. And then from there, it's just backwards substituted to get to the other two variables that are unknown.